When you have an interest in the paranormal, you will no doubt come across dozens of stories that entertain you, but they may or may not be believable to you, and they may or may not scare you. The first time I heard Phil McNeil's story, it was very convincing, and it was completely chilling. If you're interested in these kind of paranormal, creepy videos, smack that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for a constant supply of videos just like this one. In 1973, two friends, Phil McNeil and Jimmy Dunn, went for a hiking trip together through the Scottish Highlands in the dead of winter. A couple of days into the hike, as they approached the remote hunter's cabin, overshadowed by Scotland's highest mountain peak, there is no way either one of them could have known the life-changing horror they were about to face at Louis Belt Cottage. A group of hippies had taken up residence at the cottage for the Christmas season, and as far as Phil and Jimmy knew, the group was ready to receive the two hikers and give them a warm meal and a place to sleep overnight during their hiking trip. But when they arrived, no one answered the door, and the cabin was completely silent. Now, this was a bit of an awkward situation because no one really owned the cabin. It was kind of shared between travelers and hunters and hikers. The hippies were aware that the hikers would be arriving that day, but Phil and Jimmy had never met them, and they were a little unsure how the hippies would feel if they were to arrive finding the hikers inside the house already. So they waited outside for hours. As it became kind of restless, they started looking around the perimeter of the cabin, and that's when they noticed that the only tracks in the snow were made by them when they arrived at the cabin. So if the group of hippies would have been there but left for a while for a hike or something, there would have been prints all over the place. So the pair just thought, oh, well I guess they changed plans and they didn't come at all. But the door was locked, so they had to let themselves in through a window. Once they were inside, what they found immediately chilled them to the core. The house was ice cold, literally colder than it was outside. Phil and Jimmy looked at each other and immediately agreed how strange it felt in the house like they had just set foot on a ghost ship. The house was full of the hippies' belongings, fully furnished with books and their personal effects all over the place. The two entered the kitchen and then realized that it seemed like the group had just finished preparing Christmas dinner and setting the table and then abruptly left. At this point, the two had to realize something had gone wrong and they started to worry about what could have happened that made the group leave in such a hurry. So they started checking the house room by room in hopes of trying to piece together what had happened. And there was actually some of the hippies belongings in every single room except for one. This one room on the second floor in the center of the house was completely empty except for a large fist-sized rock on the windowsill. And Phil comments that this icy window with the rock in front of it had these extremely ugly curtains spread wide open. Now, they were definitely confused and a little bit worried as to what had happened to the hippies that were supposed to meet them there, but they had just hiked for multiple days through rough conditions in the middle of winter. And they really needed some rest, so they tried their best to put it out of their minds, and they bedded down in the living room. And the living room was also in the center of the house, directly under that empty room. So the two rolled out their mats and their sleeping bags, and as soon as Phil went to blow out the candles, the house absolutely exploded with paranormal activity. The first thing they heard was that rock on the windowsill in the room above them slammed down into the floor immediately followed by footsteps stomping across the room. Phil even makes the distinction that he didn't think they were footsteps, he knew they were. He could even tell that they were coming from heavy boots. He was so sure about this that he thought a drifter must have hidden in the house somewhere when he heard them entering. It's important to point out, and I probably should have already done so, that both Phil and Jimmy were total skeptics. They didn't talk about ghosts or believe in ghosts or monsters or anything like that. So when this started, they kind of froze up for a minute. For a moment, Phil kind of got his wits about them and realized they were still in pitch darkness, so he lit a candle. As soon as they had that tiny flicker of comforting light, something came across the room and kicked the candle out of his hand, smashing it against the wall. And as soon as the candle hit the wall, the room they were in erupted in paranormal activity. There's drawers and cabinets banging open and closed, and row by row, all the books in the bookshelf just came flying off. 
and they heard those same thudding footsteps cross the bedroom above them, go down the spiral staircase, and cross the corridor until they stopped right outside the living room door. Bill looks at Jimmy, who is pretty much completely overtaken with fear. He's not moving, he's not saying anything, and he grabs the ice axe that they had, and he runs up to the door and whips it open in order to confront whatever was in the house with them. Of course, there was no one there, nothing, and this did nothing to comfort the two. Phil says it was in this moment where being a skeptic went out the window. There was not a doubt in his mind that there was something evil in the house. So he slammed the door closed, and there was just a second of silence, and as soon as he turned his back on the door, they both were terrified again to hear those loud footsteps thudding across the corridor, back up the stairs, and into the bedroom before they went silent. And at this point, Jimmy did kind of check on Phil because he could actually hear Phil's heart beating against his chest. They had to get out of there, but to leave, they would have to open that door, cross the house again, and face whatever was in the darkness. But there was no way in hell they were going to open that door again, so they packed their bags in the pitch black, opened one of the windows up, and jumped out. And they sprinted about 50 yards away before turning back to look at the house. And when they did, Phil immediately noticed that those big green curtains had been pulled shut right in front of them. This, of course, made the two immediately turn back around and keep sprinting. And they hiked throughout the night before making camp the next day. Going into the cabin, both of them were skeptics. But there was kind of no way to remain skeptical when they were being attacked by whatever this was and stay in the house. So this was a bit of a dilemma for the two of them. They were skeptical, but they had just been forced out of a house by some kind of paranormal entity. So Jimmy's reaction to this was to do what most people would probably do and just bury it down deep. He didn't want to think about it. But Phil was too shaken up. He truly did not think anything like this was possible. To go from never thinking about the paranormal to being so sure of its existence that you think it's actually going to harm you, he couldn't handle that. And it changed his life because his paranormal experience had just begun. Phil wholeheartedly believes that something attached itself to him that night at the cabin and followed him for months. Being a young man, Phil had just moved into his first apartment on Gibson Street in Glasgow. Phil explains that when his friends would come to visit him, they would always make comments about how weird it felt in the building and always were asking him if it was haunted or if he knew anything about the history of the building. And even one of his more skeptical friends had commented that it just felt like something was off, like there was a weird energy in the air. But he never felt that way. Phil had kind of a rough upbringing and didn't have the best relationship with his father. It was never very peaceful, so having his own place was perfect. He loved it. It didn't matter where it was. After a terrifying night with some unknown entity at the cottage, he couldn't help but feel the exact same way everyone else had felt about his apartment. As soon as he got back to his apartment from his hiking trip, he was hearing things, he kept seeing shadows out of the corner of his eyes, and he found it impossible to get any sleep. And he ended up sleeping with the lights on for over six months. He was absolutely terrified of the dark. He constantly felt like he was on guard against this dark, looming presence hanging over him. And soon enough, all these things would start to happen that were just too weird to be true. He didn't understand how all this could be happening to him. For example, there was this painting that was in the kitchen above his stove, and it had been in there when he moved in. One day, as he was cooking on the stove, he could feel a bit of a cold draft blowing on him, so he reached out and moved the painting. And behind this painting was the opening to this bizarre passage behind his wall. So he stuck his head in and saw that the passage led to what looked like a metal spiral staircase going down into the sub-basement. And this is most likely just because he was traumatized from what happened in the cottage, but what he saw was the spiral staircase from the cottage. And although it scared him deeply to know that this passage was back there, he just put the painting back and tried not to think about it. He didn't want to know. Phil had a roommate named William, and William was actually a really handy guy. He was a carpenter and did all this different work with his hands, and they realized they had original hardwood under their carpet. So William said, hey, we can have beautiful wood floors. I will sand them and polish them, and all you have to do is pull up the carpet. So Phil, of course, accepted. So one afternoon, Phil starts to pull up the carpet, and as he's rolling it up, he sees the corner of what looks like a newspaper with some red paint on it. 
the more carpet that Phil rolled up, the more of this newspaper covered in paint that he saw. And once he had it completely uncovered, he realized it was a cross made out of newspaper and it had been sealed down to the floorboards with what didn't look like paint. It looked like old coagulated blood. Almost entranced by this bizarre discovery, without even thinking about it, Phil just kind of reached down and ripped out a piece of the newspaper, and under that was a metal latch. So, he decided to rip the rest of the newspaper up, and when he did, he realized that under it was a trap door down into the sub-basement. At this point, Phil is once again mortified to be discovering something bizarre and creepy in his own apartment, but he has to know what's going on. Just as Phil was about to open the trap door, the light bulb in the kitchen burst. Phil jumped up and ran to investigate the kitchen and found that the light bulb didn't just pop, it actually unscrewed itself out of the housing and fell to the floor. This event proved to be way too much for Phil and he was so scared that he ran out of his apartment, but he didn't stop there. He ran all the way to the train station, got on a train, took the train all the way to his hometown, and then ran from the train station in his hometown to his parents' house. Once his parents got over the initial shock of his sudden arrival, he gestured to his dad and asked if they could have a private talk. But after hearing Phil out and hearing about all these experiences, he did what most parents would probably do. He tried to encourage Phil that he was probably just seeing things and hearing things, and he actually suggested that both what happened at the cottage and in his apartment had been due to seismic activity or earthquakes. Which, okay, but that's probably just as unlikely as ghosts at this point. And just a quick aside, because Phil is not the only person to experience paranormal activity in that building on Gibson Street, others have investigated it and it does have a violent past. There were murders and a suicide and a lot of complaints about paranormal activity there. Advanced research access granted. In 1890, John McElpine, a 40-year-old gamekeeper, lived in Louis Built Cabin with his wife. One morning, he told his wife he was going for his daily walk. However, after he did not return, she searched the property, only to find her husband hanging from a rope, tied to a crossbeam. Incredibly, investigators uncovered a dizzying further connection to Phil's experience. Phil's apartment at 39 Gibson Street was built in the early 1800s, and records show that in 1851, a family with the last name McElpine lived in the building. And at the time this record was taken, they had one child, a one-year-old boy named John. Exactly 39 years later, a 40-year-old John McElpine would take his own life in the Louis-built cottage. Could this miraculous connection explain why Phil was targeted? Did the malevolent remnant of John McElpine's soul use Phil as a vessel to return home? But his father's kind of refusal to believe him really just spurred on his need to figure out what was going on. He did have a friend that he had told about their experience at Louis Belt Cottage named David. David was a great guy, brave, courageous, and through and through a skeptic. And though he did believe Jimmy and Phil about their experience, he was still skeptical of it. So Phil asked David if he would be willing to travel and hike back out to Louis Belt Cottage with him, and David agreed. So this time in late summer, Phil and David began the long, arduous trek back out to Louis Belt Cottage. The way the trail is set up, on a clear day, you can actually start to make out the cottage from about a mile away. The first time Phil had laid eyes on Louis Belt, he was excited and happy to have a warm meal and shelter for the night. This being David's first time seeing the cottage, he was ecstatic. He was really excited to experience whatever Phil had seen and try to explain it to Phil and figure out what was going on. And with all his conviction and his commitment to figure out what was going on, when Phil finally laid eyes on the cottage again, he felt nothing but dread and regret for coming back. The two entered the cottage and it seemed like nothing much had changed at all. They once again searched every room, but this time David was knocking on the walls and checking for secret doors or hidden passageways that someone could have hidden in. His theory was someone that knew of this cottage or maybe had used it before as a hiker or hunter or traveler had made plans to set up permanently. And that when hikers or hunters or travelers would stop by, they would just hide themselves. But of course, no one was there, and they also didn't see any signs that anyone had been living there. 
So the two decide to bed down once again in the living room in the center of the house, and they began preparing a meal on their camping stove. After they finished eating, they decided to go to sleep, and as soon as they blew out the candles and were encompassed in this heavy darkness, they started to hear something. It sounded like somebody was about 15 or 20 yards away and was dragging a garbage bag full of garbage up the path towards the cottage. And the sound continued getting louder and louder and they started to think they were hearing voices but they couldn't make out what they were saying and they started to hear this really strong wind. But it was like all these sounds were in a vortex together and were all traveling closer and closer to the house until it stopped right outside the front door. And then there's a pause and it goes silent but just for a second before the front door blows open and slams against the wall and then they hear this crazy combination of sounds and this dragging coming right up to the door into the living room which again they have closed and as they feel this crazy push of wind come under the crack in the door david is just beside himself this skeptic it doesn't matter whether he believes or not he is terrified and whatever this is starts to bang on the living room door so hard that it's shaking on its hinges and Phil kind of enters into this state. And he does something that he has a hard time explaining even to this day. He reaches out his fist towards the door but he leaves his pinky and his thumb outstretched. And he describes his shadow from his fist and his arm growing to the point where it's massive and taking up half the room. And he begins to let out this inhuman yell and as soon as he did it was like all the sounds that were pushing towards them were instantly reversed and it was like this great amount of power was pushing back towards outside of the room. He had no idea what he was doing but the house went silent. Everything was fine. And after they kind of huddled up around the candlelight for a few hours, they decided everything was okay and they went to sleep. The next day they woke up, packed their things, and cautiously opened the door into the rest of the house and there was nothing there. Everything was fine and the front door did not look like it had been opened. Phil would later research this gesture he made with his arm and his hand and find out that it was apparently some kind of demonic symbol. Later, after telling some more friends about this story, they insisted he take them back out to Louis Belt Cottage and he accepted. Once again, Phil made the trek back out to Louisbelt, but this time, once they could see the cottage, they saw that it was nothing more than a ruin. Once they entered what was left of Louisbelt Cottage, all of Phil's suspicions and fears would kind of come full circle. Someone had painted, do not sleep in this house. This house is evil, and just the word evil, 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 over and over, all over the walls, before apparently trying to burn the place down. Phil would make repeated trips out to the ruin over and over again, but he's never really experienced anything paranormal again. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Please feel free to leave story suggestions or submissions in the comments. And I can't thank you enough for all the support that I've gotten already for everyone who's subscribed, and I really appreciate it. Unauthorized communications detected.